Hey everybody, Complete Pete again. Uh, I've had several uh, emails from viewers and people asking questions that have enjoyed the, the PVC third hand device that I, uh, I put a video up on not that long ago. Uh, but the newest emails are asking questions about uh, trailering. And trailering uh, kayaks is something I've never considered because while I love the Subaru and it's easy enough with you know two people or the third hand device to put the boats up on top, I never really thought about it. I also have a full size pickup and it's easy just to throw a boat or two in the back of that and, and just go. But while I love the Subaru, there's been a change. I have a new Jeep Grand Cherokee and someone else is enjoying the Subaru very much um, as we speak. So, but now that puts me in a situation where I'm kind of starting over and I don't have a rack system for this vehicle. So the Jeep Grand Cherokee's got the integrated rails in the top and the, uh, you know, that's gonna be a bit of an issue. So in looking for a rack system for this, I really like the Yakima rack I had on the Subaru. Uh, looking at the Yakima rack for this vehicle here, I had just looked up the prices briefly uh, this morning and the rack system for this vehicle is $570. I think that Hullivator is probably the single greatest device that you could put on your vehicle. Uh, it takes a big percentage of the weight of the boat. You can mount the boat in the hooks and kind of goes right up and sits on top. And I considered that for this. Uh, unfortunately, the Hullivator is $750. So if I add the Hullivator and the, uh, the rack system for this, it comes out to $1,320, which is which is a little, a little rich for my blood, um, you know, of course, after buying the vehicle. So I made a decision. So we have a, a brand new trailer. Harbor Freight's a very popular one. They have a four or $500 uh, trailer. It comes in a kit, and I think you're gonna spend about three days bolting it together. Um, cannot find them to save my life. Uh, they're, they're out of stock everywhere, you know, within 200 miles of, of our area. And um, the people at the store tell me, like, don't expect it. There's some sort of issue with the DOT rating on the tires or something like that. I looked at another trailer from uh, Northern Tool. They also have a bolt-together trailer uh, in the same price range. But there's a big note on there that you can't tow any faster than 45 miles an hour. Now, people say you can interpret that a bunch of different ways. I, I don't want to interpret everything. I just want a trailer I can hook to the back and drive as fast as I want within the speed limit. I had really considered the, uh, tr the uh, uh, Harbor Freight trailer, uh, the bolt together, but really when you bolt something together, it's, that's a maintenance item. You always have to keep checking those bolts. You have a chance of something vibrating loose. I really prefer a welded trailer um, or the bolt together trailer welded together but i really wanted to do something for for the folks who are asking me the questions these are folks that don't have welders and grinders and all the tools i have uh, to work with so in this case tractor supply had a five by eight solid welded trailer it's a carry-on brand trailer super uh, good quality enamel coated all solid steel welded joints uh, one of the things i really liked is that the tires are speed rated these are 13 inch tires so I had this on the way home doing 65 miles an hour. The thing was right behind me. There was no movement or anything. I really liked it. Um, one of the things it does has, uh, have is this, uh, this drop gate. And I will actually drop the gate for you. So this is a utility trailer. And here's the drop gate. One of the things we do want to do is haul our ATV on here. We might want to go to the dump. Um, if we go camping, we, we usually um, go primitive camping, really, really lightweight, but sometimes we do go camping with the kitchen sink, so it is good to have some extra room. Uh, one of the things I had decided to do with this trailer initially, because it was just for kayaks at the time, I was going to come through with a cutoff wheel, just cut this off all the way across, cap it with a piece of angle, and then it would just be a, a trailer with a tiny little door that was just part of the structure. But what I decided to do, since we do want to put our ATV on here, we might want to put a couple of dirt bikes on here, uh, be able to walk up a ramp and load things and not bikes and things without uh, stepping over the side. I realized that this gate folds all the way down. So 
We, I did give this some thought. There is a way to lock this down. Um, I do have a, like a J hook assembly that we're going to install on this. I'll show you later. Uh, and this is kind of what I decided to do. So uh, I have some other parts and pieces I got together. And so far we're about $800 in on this project. Now trailering might not be for everybody. I would say you'd probably be hard pressed to find a car uh, a little SUV or something that could not handle this trailer. This trailer is so light that I can move it around with one hand around the yard and the driveway. So I wouldn't be worried about the carrying weight. Your kayaks aren't that heavy. Uh, many of your vehicles may already have a uh, receiver hitch on them, uh, so you're, you're good to go. Some vehicles might not. You might not want a trailer. You might not have a place to store the trailer. Uh, you know, there could be a whole host of reasons you don't want a trailer. One of the things you will need on your vehicle is you're going to need a receiver hitch. So you can see uh, this receiver hitch here. This was a hundred and this is a really good one. This is a Kurt, um, and they really take a lot of care with their welding because uh, that's where the uh, that's where the rust will start. You see how smooth those welds are. They also e-coat the inside of this tube. So I'm a real big fan of the Kurt products, and uh, that's $119 on Amazon, and. It just showed up one day. I have, uh, you could get it off with a socket wrench, but it's about 120 foot pounds, so it's a little bit of, uh, you gotta really pull on it. The, um, I have a little uh, DeWalt cordless impact gun that I put a socket on, and I just got right up there. I zipped those bolts out, laid on the bottom. My son and I, we pushed this thing up, we bolted it on. I mean, if that took us 30 minutes to install that thing, it, it's, that was a lot of time. The wiring harness you can see here, we installed the wire, wiring harness. This is another auxiliary part, the plug. Uh, this little bracket was, I think, about $10 or $12. And we ran this bracket. There's a module that comes with this system that you just mount on an existing screw uh, up underneath the car. It just, if anything happens with the wiring, it protects the uh, wiring of the vehicle. So it's made for, for this 2021 Grand Cherokee. Um, and we just tie wrapped the, the cable right up front. It was really easy to install. It probably took us longer to figure out like where to tie wrap up the, the one wire we had to run uh, than it took to install the whole system. So this might have been all in all uh, two hours to do that. We we're probably joking around more than we were installing the thing anyway. So, uh, and then we have about $20 in this, uh, in this lock. Uh, we, had the, we had the ball holder and we had the ball already so I mean really the the lighting kit was about fifty four dollars so we're not really into it for that much now when you look at thirteen twenty for the uh, the rack system in one elevator and then you're looking at eight hundred for the trailer and you know one hundred and nineteen and another fifty four I'm still I'm still below the cost and I could do a whole bunch of other things with this trailer so that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's the point I'm trying to get across. And uh, you know, if you were to go, just for the heck of it, because I knew I'd get some questions about it, um, I don't have a hitch on my car. What do I do? I just looked up a local U-Haul in my area. They'll sell you a similar tub tubular hitch. They will give you um, the ball holder. They'll do the whole light kit for you. They will give you the ball. They will give you a locking pin. Um, uh, two inch ball would come with the whole kit and installation was 372 so if you're looking at the $800 trailer plus plus 372 to get the hitch put on and the wiring put on you have to make your own decisions I know that you know there could be a new hobby around the corner for me anywhere that I'm going to told, totally get invested in I never know when that's going to happen but the utility trailer is going to let me support a bunch of my other hobbies one of the things I like about this project is the, just the, this, the small conversion process of going to kayak hauler. Um, one of the things I mentioned before was not wanting to cut down this, uh, the trailer deck. Uh, I want to reuse that in the future for other stuff. Uh, but I also don't want it to bounce while I'm driving. I don't want it to, because the trailer does bounce quite a bit, and I don't want this pressure on the trailer and I don't want to hit a bump and have this come up and hit the boats or something like that. And also driving like this puts a lot of stress on the welded hinges in the back. So I don't want to crack a hinge off uh, or anything like that. So I'm just dealing with some scrap wood I had around the house. I happen to have a piece of scrap uh, treated four by four laying around since this won't be in this position all the time. So now 
it's solid. It won't be bouncing at all. Um, and like I said, it's just, it's just scrap wood, saving me a couple bucks, taking the weight off. Now that solves the bouncing this way, the bouncing up. If you hit a big bump, I don't want it to hit the boats or something like that. I just went and grabbed a 3 8 anchor bolt uh, from Home Depot. And uh, there's other products, they have other versions that are hooked even more. And the nice thing about this project is you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot or your local lumber yard. When you start measuring your wood and things that you need, just have them cut it while they're there. And they just throw the cut pieces in your car. So really the only tool you need for this project is a cordless drill and a drill bit set, which most everybody has that anyway. And searching for a way to hold the ramp down so it didn't bounce while we were driving, uh, we ended up purchasing uh, two J-hooks and a nylock nut, uh, 3 8 by 16. Uh, and you can see how that uh, hook fits right over the sheet metal or the steel part of the uh, the ramp uh, and just simply down through the expanded wire mesh that makes up the deck of the trailer. Uh, originally, we had thought about drilling some holes in the framing, and this was just a simple way to uh, to fasten the, the ramp down. So the idea is with the, our multi-purpose utility trailer is to be able to use for a bunch of stuff. So we're gonna go into the kayak mode and we happen to have some, uh, some wood left over from an outdoor project, some treated wood we just cut in half. You can really use anything. Um, and all we did was take the, uh, these J-hangers that we had, you can see they're quite used, and we just bolted them right through the, right through the plank. So nothing fancy. And that uh, our plan is to be able to put three boats on here along with coolers and other associated things. Um, you may have noticed the white lines on here. The white lines are just some measuring I did ahead of time to see what the center point of the boat was. Because this trailer does not have an extended tongue, but the axle is back quite a way. So the center weight of the trailer is right here over the axle. So the boat will fit uh, great on there. So all I'm gonna do is just lay this right across where I measured. So I've already marked out some holes. I just want to kind of be in the center of the angle material. So I'm going to drill here and here right through. I'm going to do that now. Got my cordless drill, got my drill assortment. I am using uh, 5 sixteenths by uh, two galvanized uh, carriage bolts. And you can see how the carriage bolt has a square head on it. So once that is tapped flush with the wood, it'll lock one side in. Um, and that should make this totally removable. So you can see I got some extra length on there. So let me drill these holes. I'm gonna take a 5 16 bit. We may have to go a little bit larger, but we'll give it a, we'll give it a shot. It's one, and I'm gonna put the bolt in just to hold one end of it in place while I'm working. And as you can see, the carriage bolt stopped at the shoulder. There's the shoulder, you can see it right there. It stops at the shoulder. Little tap with the hammer, and that's gonna hold the one end, and then we'll just be able to put our washer and our nuts on there. Got the matching washer, got a nut. We'll run the nut all the way up. The store didn't have nylon locking nuts, so what we'll do is we'll just tighten this up and we'll double nut it. So we'll put a second nut on there and the second nut will lock in the first nut. So it'll end up looking like that and I'll, I'll continue on and drill the rest of it. Well, I uh, cut the final piece, I laid it on there uh, we bolted the other uh, set of our used J hooks on there and uh, this will be bolted down with the, uh, the uh, carriage bolts just like this one I did uh, a few minutes ago. So that's bolted down, easily removable. So we only have eight, eight nuts to take off and then these, these uh, mounts will lift right off, get put to the side and it's back to being a utility trailer again. So you can see we have the one boat mounted. 
Uh, this is a Tarpon 120. So you can see it doesn't really stick too far up the back. We would, would hang like a red, you know, piece of red uh, strap or something off the back for visibility. Uh, but you can see how it sits in the hooks. You can see we have plenty of room up here between the vehicle, you know, making sharp turns and backing up and things like that. We've uh, pretty confident this is going to be a, a pretty decent mount. This is a 63 pound boat and I can get this on here myself by picking it up and just putting it right into the mount. So there's no overhead lifting. If I can get the boat up near my waist, I can get it into the hooks. So this might be a viable option for the folks that are willing to uh, buy a trailer, do a little DIY stuff and not make the big investment for the, uh, you know, the full size rack. You know, my issue is that I always go with at least two people. So I would need the roof rack system, two hull elevators, and you know, if I'm with another person who can't lift the boat up, uh, that, that's an issue. So this might work for some folks and I hope this helps and, and gets everybody out on the water.